Hello class, um, I just wanted to make this recording for you so that you could have something to continue to work. Um, unfortunately, I'm not available today. Um, that's okay. All right, let me show you this so you guys can know how to graph polar coordinates. This should be a review, so it shouldn't be too, too bad, but I wanted to demonstrate it for you just in case. So in this first example, A, uh, we, we want two posts uh, or plot the point uh, 2, uh, 3 pi. And we have to remember that r is the first number and then the angle is the second. So when we go to post this, we usually go with the angle first. And so since we're going 3 pi, this is 1 pi, then 2 pi, and then we'll have to go a third pi. So this here is going to be 3 pi where we end up but then we need to go two markings and that is the point 2 comma 3 pi in polar coordinates um, <clears throat> so remember that when you're doing polar uh, going counterclockwise is um, um, the way to go when you're going positive for B, I wanted to show a negative angle so you guys could see what a negative angle was. And so now we're going to go a negative uh, 2 pi over 3. And so a negative 2 pi over 3 um, is going to get us to go over. Uh, now, just so we can have reference, um, remember that uh, this is pi over 3 over here. Uh, 2 pi over 3 is over here. So if this is positive 2 pi over 3, that same thing would have to be flipped and brought over to this side. So this is a negative 2 pi over 3, the angle negative 2 pi over 3. And then we need to go two dashes, and there's our point, uh, 2, negative 2 pi over 3. Um, I also wanted to show you one just in case because uh, I wanted to make sure that you um, were fine with um, um, <clears throat> a negative radius because that's something that people can struggle sometimes with. So I wanted to do, uh, how about a negative 2, 3 pi? And so we end up at 3 pi, right? Just like we did in the first example. There's 1 pi then 2 pi, and then here's 3 pi. And if we would have gone 2, it would have been here. But instead of going a positive 2, we're going to go back 2. And this is negative 2, 3 pi. The, the thing that's important here is when the radius is positive, you're going to walk um, in the direction where the angle stops. Um, if the ang if the radius is negative, you're going to walk the opposite way. So here we stopped here, correct? So from the radius, I would have walked one, two, like I did in this one. That was a positive radius. In this case, with the negative radius, I stop here. I'm pointing in this direction as positive, but I have to go negative, so I walk the opposite way. One, two, or walking backwards is a good way to think about it for that one. All right, that's just some simple graphing. It should, should completely be review, um, but I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page um, <clears throat> before I moved on. Uh, these equations will be very important, so uh, please know them. Um, the x is our cosine, y is our sine, uh, tangent theta is x over y, um, and then uh, this is the typo <laughs> that shouldn't be there. It should be uh, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Um, so make sure that that gets fixed. And when I post up the um, notes, I'll make sure that that's uh, gone for you guys. All right. Now we want to do an example with this information to be able to, to, to garner some some knowledge to be useful for us. And so, like I said before, the r here will be 2. Our theta is going to be pi over 3. And what we want to do in this problem is we want to go from polar to Cartesian coordinates. <clears throat> uh, Cartesian coordinates are just the x, y plane that you guys know. 
Um, they're called the Cartesian coordinates because of the man who created it, uh, Rene Descartes. Um, most people don't know that, but, but that's his name, Rene Descartes. And so let's go ahead and see if we can find this in the Cartesian coordinate. It shouldn't be too bad. Uh, X is equal to the radius times the angle, but the angle has to be within cosine. Uh, that's a three, it's a terrible three, but okay. <clears throat> so that's gonna give me two times uh, pi over three is gonna give me a one half. So I'm gonna get a one, so x is equal to one, and then y is gonna be two times sine of pi over three, uh, which will give me two times radical three over two, which will give me radical three. And so what this tells me is the point that is equivalent is one radical three. So one radical three in our xy plane or the Cartesian coordinate system will be the same as in polar uh, two uh, comma pi over three. So that's something that, that's something useful to use to be able to convert between the two types. Um, let's do another going the other way. This this could be good to see. So now I'm giving you the point one negative one, and I want to get to pol polar. And so the first thing that we need to do is be able to find the radius. And so the radius is going to be r is equal to x squared plus y squared, right? From the r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And then we're going to get uh, 1 squared plus a negative 1 squared is going to give me um, square root of 2. And then we also know that tangent theta is equal to... Uh, y over x and so uh, we have 10 of theta will be negative 1 over 1 10 of theta is equal to negative 1 um, if we wanted to find that specific angle uh, theta is equal to 10 inverse of negative 1 and then we need to remember 10 inverse does have its restrictions and so it's restricted 2 negative pi over 2 uh, to pi over 2. So in finding the first one, we know that uh, our angle is going to be negative pi over 4. Um, so <clears throat> one of the polar uh, equations that we could use or for, for the point would be this. Um, but we also know that if we would have gone in the positive direction, right, um, since we're in the Cartesian coordinate system, going here, uh, we would have ended up here. We could also go the other way to get there. And so to complete the 2 pi, isn't that the same as 7 pi over 4? So that's another possibility for an answer. Um, I probably would go with this one. Um, but it's really not that big of a deal in terms of um, being able to understand it and move forward, okay? Um, <clears throat> you could have even gone from here and then just said, okay, where is this thing equal to negative 1? And then you see it's 7 pi over 4, and then just remember that the reference angle is also a possibility, but remembering the restriction on them. Uh, that's why typically I go with the restricted one. Um, it just shows that you get have the understanding on the problem. Okay. Now, so far this has had no calculus, and this is just reference and review of what you've done in the past. Um, of course, I need to bring in some calculus, so let me do that. We're going to do a problem, and this is the derivative for polar. Uh, it looks complicated, but it's really not too bad. The only derivative that you're really doing is you're taking the derivative of um, your r with respect to theta. Um, so in this problem that we have here, our r is um, 1 plus sine theta. So then dr d theta, which we'll use for both the numerator and denominator, is just going to be cosine theta. 
Okay, so then we'll, <coughs> this is for part A. So then um, to find the derivative and find the slope specifically at pi over 3, um, let's go ahead and do that. So dy dx is going to be equal to um, the dr d theta, right? This piece, which is going to be cosine theta um, and then times sine theta plus, right, plus r, but we know r, r is 1 plus sine theta cosine theta. That's the numerator. Now the denominator uh, shows us that it's the derivative, so that's going to be cosine theta times cosine theta minus, we know r, and then it's sine theta. <clears throat> okay. So, and that's just, again, reference from here. The only difference is I'm going to find what dr d theta is. That was cosine. So I should get cosine times cosine minus r, which I know is 1 plus sine theta times sine theta, which gives me this. Okay. <clears throat> now we just got to clean this up a little bit, which isn't too bad. I can see I can pull out a cosine. So I'm going to get cosine theta, uh, sine theta, um, plus 1 plus sine theta over, uh, I'm going to get cosine squared theta minus sine theta minus sine squared theta. Uh, that's going to give me cosine theta um, 1 plus 2 sine theta. And then the denominator, um, I'm going to see if I can factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, change the cosine squared to um, in terms of sine. So it's going to be 1 minus sine squared minus sine theta minus sine squared theta. So let's see if that helps us at all. Maybe it doesn't, but um, <laughs> we'll try. Uh, we got 1 plus 2 sine theta. And then the denominator, we're going to get 1 minus sine theta minus 2 <coughs> sine squared theta. <coughs> uh, so then from here, that is factorable. Um, I'm going to get a 1 plus sine theta. 1 minus 2 sine theta. Uh, nothing cancels, unfortunately. Um, so then we just evaluate that at pi over 3. <clears throat> and that's going to give us uh, cosine of pi over 3 times 1 plus 2 sine pi over 3 over 1 plus sine, oops, <laughs> pi over 3, uh, 1 minus 2 sine pi over 3. And that should give me uh, 1 half 1 plus radical 3 over 1 plus radical 3 over 2 times 1 minus radical 3. Oops, my apologies radical 3. Um, that should be able to clean up. Um, let's see how I can clean that up. I'm going to get 1 half uh, 1 plus radical 3 over, uh, let's go 2 plus radical 3 and then bring out the half, 1 minus radical 3. The half should cancel. Um, oh, I wonder if that becomes a 1. Oh, no, that's right. So let's see, what can we do?
Hmm. It doesn't look like I can cancel anything, does it? Well, let me see if I can. All right, let's keep playing. Uh, so I should get one plus radical three. And then here, um, I'm gonna get two plus radical three over one minus radical three. Um, let's see if I expand and factor, if I can get it somehow to reduce. All right, let me, I'm just gonna play. I, I wanna see if this cleans up. Um, so I'm gonna get two, two um, minus two radical three plus radical three minus three. So what does that give me when I clean that up? I should get uh, negative one minus radical three. There we go. So I'm gonna get one plus radical three over a negative one minus radical three, which will give me uh, negative one. So the slope is negative one. It, <clears throat> manipulation of arithmetic, right? <laughs> Crazy. Okay, so then from there, our part B asks, uh, where can we find the horizontal and vertical tangents? Well, the vertical and horizontal tangents are gonna be, uh, let's part, Let's do the horizontal first. And so the horizontal is found when the numerator is equal to zero. So that's gonna be the dy d theta, which we know to be cosine theta one plus two sine theta. And we set that equal to zero. And just so you guys see, that is uh, just this top piece after we cleaned it up, it's right here. Uh, setting that equal to zero, okay? Setting that one equal to zero, the numerator. Um, <clears throat> that gives us this, and so I'm gonna get cosine of theta is equal to zero, or one plus two sine theta is equal to zero. So theta is equal to cosine uh, inverse of zero, and that occurs at uh, pi over two and three pi over two. Um, and then this other one is going to be sine theta is equal to a negative one half. Theta is equal to sine inverse of a negative one half. And that occurs at seven pi over six and 11 pi over six. Um, <clears throat> now, one of the things that's important there is um, to find the points because it's asking where the points are. I'll show you one and you can do the rest. So when pi over two is my theta, uh, I need to plug into my original equation. And remember that the r was equal to one plus sine theta. So I'm gonna go one plus sine of pi over two. Um, that's one plus one. So my radius is two, so I know my point there is going to be this one. Now to get the others, you just have to check, and you can do this, you'll check for three pi over two for your theta, seven pi over six for your theta, and 11 pi over six for your theta, and find the other three points, okay? <clears throat> All right, off to uh, finding the vertical, so where the verticals happen. Okay, so the verticals will be where the denominator is equal to zero. So that's gonna be my dx d theta, and that's the one plus sine theta, one minus two sine theta, setting that equal to zero. <clears throat> so one plus sine theta 
equal to zero is going to occur when sine inverse is equal to a negative one. Uh, when is sine inverse equal to a negative one? That is at three pi over two. That's my theta for that one. And then the other one is here. And that's gonna occur when sine is one half. So sine inverse of one half occurs where that is at uh, pi over six and five pi over six. And so we could find those values for where that happens. Again, doing the exact same thing, right? Um, <clears throat> R equals one plus sine theta. So we know that's gonna be a half. So this is gonna be three halves. So then that tells me that I'm gonna have three halves uh, pi over six. And then it would be the same thing for five pi over six because the radius is gonna be the same, or yep, yeah, it's gonna be the same, it's still gonna be the same. Now this one becomes a little bit tricky because three pi over two made the numerator zero. Uh, so that means that we have zero over zero, which introduces uh, a critical issue with Leo Vital. So to confirm that this is in fact a vertical, um, we're gonna to have to demonstrate that using limits. So the limit as theta approaches three pi over two from the left of dy dx is going to be the limit as theta approaches three pi over two from the left of one plus two sine theta over one minus two sine theta um, with the limit as uh, theta approaches three pi over two from the left of cosine over one plus sine theta. Um, <clears throat> and so we see that we're gonna have Leobital's rule occur here. And so the derivative of that is going to be, um, uh, it's gonna yield one third a negative one third. And then we'll have the limit as theta approaches three pi over two from the left, uh, which will be cosine theta over one plus sine theta. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, this is the Leo Vital piece. My, my apologies, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> that one we just evaluated uh, with the one half and the one half. And then from here we see we're going to get the Leo Vital piece, which will be a negative one third, the limit as theta approaches uh, three pi over two from the left, uh, which is going to give me a negative sine theta over cosine theta. And that's gonna give me, um, the, the denominator's gonna be approaching zero, the numerator's gonna be approaching uh, infinity, negative time negative gives me a positive, so I get infinity. So um, three pi over two is in fact a vertical asymptote. All right, that concludes 10.3. Um, on Wednesday, we'll, I'll be able to answer any questions you might have on it. All right, here we go.